going to talk now with Stan Lovett, play-by-play -play broadcaster for the Williamsburg Yellow Jackets. Been doing this 44 years. Tell us a little bit about how you got started with this. Well, you know, it's always been a labor of love with me. I started back in college. I went to the University of Tennessee, actually. John Ward was, many of you, older people will know John Ward, icon. I think he's the greatest uh, broadcaster, football and basketball, that there's ever been in college. So I started there. I did it in college uh, there at UT. Got a lot of information there. Then transferred over to University of Cumberland's. Now, it used to be Cumberland College at that time. Uh, then, uh, found, uh, then I got married, and I didn't want to go all over the United States uh, broadcasting. So my wife and I settled in Lexington, Kentucky. I got a job teaching school there. In the process, I've done high school games up there down through the years, uh, the 80s. I did television up there. So, it, you know, TM has just been a labor of love. I've enjoyed it. I still enjoy it. I'm getting older, but I still enjoy it, doing it. And uh, when I retired, a friend of mine asked me, he said, will you come down to a ball game? I, he said, I don't have anyone to do the ball game. I've, I've sold this package. I don't have anyone. And he says, Sam, could, could you do one ball game? Well, I came down, didn't have anything else going on at the time, came down, did a ball game. And from there, I went uh, seven, eight, ten games that year, and then basketball. So I've been doing it since uh, 91 here when I retired school. So I've been doing that ever since then. So it's, uh, it's uh, like I said, been a labor, labor of love, and I've enjoyed every minute of it. All right, Sam, tell us a little bit about your coach. He's been here 16 years, Coach Heron, and a lot of success under his watch, and especially a big year last year. You know, Tim, uh, Jerry played here. He bleeds orange, just like you guys. Uh, he, uh, he, he came uh, 16 years ago. He only was coaching middle school uh, assistant coach. And uh, two or three coaches, to be quite honest with you, sort of turned it down. They offered it to them. They'd been around for a while. But Jerry said, hey, you know, if you want me, I'll take it. He's just a natural-born coach. By that, I mean he can relate to the kids, which is huge in this day and time because I've taught almost 55 years. And if you can't relate to kids, you're not going to go very far. He's uh, been very successful. He's won the district uh, 14 out of 15 years. He has not lost a district game in about seven years. Uh and the kids buy into that. It's a small school. Only got 50 kids, uh, more or less 50 kids is playing football. And so everyone that goes to school, 150 of them, 50 of them play football. So it's, uh, he's got a great staff, and uh, he does a great job. Talk to us a little bit about last year. We, you know, I read that it was supposed to be kind of a rebuilding year. They'd lost some, some players, but then you wind up in the final four uh, in the state. How, how was that run? What was it like in the middle of it? Well, it was real. Uh, it was great. Uh, we went to Louisville, played Kentucky, Christian, Kentucky Country Day, which is a private school in Louisville. Very fine football team. Uh, they really were better than Williamsburg. They had a better line. We never could block them uh, that, that night. But it was, uh, you know, Williamsburg 2014-2015 two, uh, played in the uh, state championship, Class A. Got beat by Mayfield. If you know anything about Kentucky football, you know Mayfield is right up there with any of them. Got beat on the last second. Guy kicked the field goal, beat us in the last out. So he went two years there to state championship. Uh, then last year in the uh, semifinals, got beat by a uh, country day out of Louisville. But, uh, again, they were young last year. This and most of them are returning. And you know, whenever you've got a good program, it's just like a magnet. It brings them to you. So we've had a lot of transfers. Uh, how they develop will be a question mark. But he does have a good football team. So if I ask the average Williamsburg fan, what's the expectations for this team in 2021? Well, I think most people are looking for them to go a long way, perhaps even win the state. Uh, there's one team out there, Pikeville returns most of their kids. Actually, they probably should have won it last year. Paintsville won it. They were up in the mountains, and but uh, Pikeville probably was a better ball club. That night, though, they didn't come to play and got beat. Uh, anticipation is very high in Williamsburg, much like Oneida. I'm f very familiar with Oneida. Uh, we used to, I told you earlier, Tim, we used to play Oneida every spring. Now, I don't think they can anymore. After the spring practice was over, we would have a scrimmage and it'd be a, a nighttime deal. So either Oneida or Huntsville, Tennessee would come over or we would go over there. So, yeah, uh, he, he should go a long way. If uh, he's got a, a tremendous quarterback, he's just a junior. Um, 
they have a good quarterback system here. They like to throw it, and uh, they have good coaches there to, uh, to perform. Tell us a little bit about the quarterback news has made it to us, and then uh, what are some other players we need to watch out for? Well, Sidney Bowen is a junior. Sidney Bowen's been playing since he was in the fifth grade. He's grown up a lot. He's about 235 pounds now. He throws the ball very well. He really is reticent to run the football. He'd rather throw it, and why not? Because he's got some great receivers over there. Uh, Rainwater, Rainwater played last year, a good wide out. Uh, he'll be there. Uh, Bronson Bates, well, you'll keep an eye on him, number 20. And he's, he's a good player. He, he's a running back, and also he's a wide out. Uh, so Bates is there. They've got a lot of young Young kids coming along at McFarland, they're, they're high on him. And so, you know, they'll play a bevy of, of wideouts in this, in this uh, formation, in this offense. Defensively, what should we look for from Williamsburg? Well, defensively, you've got to stick your eye on number nine, uh, Chris Howard. He's all SEKC probably in all fairness, should have been all, all state last year. He's a dandy. Uh, you look at the defense, too, as I look at it. Uh, there's several of them on there. Uh, they've got uh, Zach Brown, who played uh, some last year, Zach Bowen, John uh, Parsons, and also another guy that is, is, uh, plays both ways, Jaden Rainwater. You'll see him at the wideout. You'll see him at the linebacker. Just a tremendous athlete. Br uh, Bronson Bates will also be a linebacker. He'll play both ways. Jerry likes to really not platoon that much. He likes to just uh, keep the players and, and play, uh, play them on offense, play them on defense. But he's got so, so many good players this year that he's playing both offense and defense, and he's, he's, he's uh, splitting them out. All right. Uh, if you could, just give me uh, your best summary. If somebody, if somebody from the inside, when you look at your team in, a, in an honest assessment, what is the absolute strength? of the Williamsburg Yellow Jackets? Well, I think you're going to go back to offensive line. These kids have played, and Jerry is a master at uh, coaching offensive line. Uh, you've, got, uh, you've got a kid by the name of Connor Lay. He's a junior. He's played two years since he's a freshman. Jordan Hurst is a junior. He's 280 pounds. By the way, Lay is 260 pounds. Justin Ty is a senior. Uh, he's a center. Obviously, a center is very important. He's been a good uh, center for them. And they're starting a new guy by the name of uh, Gambrel tonight. Uh, he's 185 pounds, only a sophomore. And Pittman is, a, is a, another sophomore. So I guess you could say they've got some sophomores, they've got some juniors, and they've got some kids have, who have played, and Jerry likes that combination. What is something that has been a weakness or an area that – that Williamsburg has concerns that they're hoping to see improvement in tonight that has been maybe an Achilles portion? Kicking, extra point kicking, field goal kicking. We had one last year, but he decided not to play this year. Uh, that has been an Achilles heel, not only the last five or six years, but it's been an Achilles heel for Williamsburg down through the years. We have never been able to get a solid kicker. And in this game, they call it football, and that's very important that you get a – field goal kicker, obviously, or extra point guy. So we've lost a ton of games just by that. We lost a championship game at, at Mayfield because we didn't kick a field goal. So does that extend just to field goal kicking, or is that punting and kickoffs as well? Well, we've had some pretty good punters. I think Howard's going to get the nod tonight. Jerry didn't tell me who it was, was going to be, but he's the punter, and uh, he may insert somebody else, but I think Howard might be. But, yeah, uh, punting's been fairly decent, but I would say in a whole – scheme of things, if you're going to win state championships or national championships, you better trot out a good field goal kicker because if you don't, it's going to cost you sooner or later. And uh, it's cost us. That would be the big thing. And I, I'll tell you another thing, Tim, is uh, we've really never had the speed that you can throw up against a, say, Pikeville or some of the uh, real good solid football teams. I think speed, quickness, that type of thing. They probably do this year, though. This is one of those abnormal years that Williamsburg has some speed. Thank you, Mr. Lovett. Any Thanks. final comments you got? Well, I think uh, I think it's going to be a great game. I, I like Oneida. They're well coached. Uh, I talked with the coach this week. I, you know, down through the years, Oneida's always had great football teams. Of course, uh, I didn't know that. I knew that close, they were close in winning the state championship several times, and I knew that uh, you all told me that they won it in '92. Uh, it's a great football town, 
It's a tremendous school over there. I like the orange and white. <laughs> it's not that far from uh, my favorite town, even though I live in Lexington. It's not far from Knoxville, Tennessee. So uh, you're in great you're in great spots over there, Tim. Uh, thanks, sir. We appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Tim Smith. All right, I appreciate it too. Thank you for giving me some time.